Let there be light. Hi guys! So every Monday I've decided to do all these personal videos that hopefully can encourage you all. So I am naming the series every Monday as coffee chit chats or like coffee chats with Karen. This topic that I'm going to be telling you guys is actually very personal to me. So if you've been following me ever since 2013 or 2014, um, you'd know that I previously suffered from an eating disorder which is anorexia and I asked you guys if you wanted to know how I overcame it and some of you said yes. So finally today I am going to be making it and probably some of you are going to be like oh my gosh after 10,000 years she finally decided to make this. And also just a little disclaimer this video can be triggering to some people because I'm basically I'm literally going to lay it all out everything I'm gonna tell you guys every single thing that I did. I used to be like a really like skinny skinny child and then puberty happened and all of a sudden my body started to change. I can say that I was a little bit more curvy. I did gain weight but I was not really fat or obese at that point of my life because I went through this phase to where they call it hinupang. I don't know if it's a myth or anything but they said that it's a point of your life when you're a teenager and you tend to eat a lot. People called me chubby in here in the Philippines. When you're chubby or if you have curves, you're automatically fat. They just label you like that. And then as I said, I started to grow boobs. And I was like, oh my gosh, what are these? And um, I remember one of my classmates, she actually, you know, pointed out my boobs and she's like, oh my gosh, what are those? You're growing boobs. It looks so malaswa on you. Malaswa in English means um, obscene or like vulgar. She said that I look vulgar because I had boobs. And keep in mind that I'm not wearing sexy clothing or anything. I was literally wearing my school uniform, but because my boobs grew, so the boobs are noticeable. And also this is a thing that I want to emphasize. And this is to the girls and the boys, okay? Let us stop sexualizing boobs or like breasts because it is a body part that God has given a woman, okay? And it should not be sexualized. It's just a part of the body. I don't understand the whole class of boobs, okay? So for me, I kind of actually felt embarrassed. True story. <laughs> So you know what I did? Out of me being embarrassed and not wanting to look inappropriate, you know, what I did is I actually bind them girls. And also, I would wear um, as much as I can, you know, if it's a day to where we just wear not our uniforms, I would wear some baggy shirts because I didn't want them to be noticeable. And also one of the reasons why I bind them is because I thought that I looked fat if I had boobs. Because I was used to being like flat, but all of a sudden since this thing grew, I was like, ew. Way back then when I was a teenager, this whole flat look was in. And then this is also the time to where I experience fat shaming in full force. I feel like if you're in the Philippines or growing up in the Philippines, like people are very meticulous about other people's weight. So I did get a lot of fat shaming comments growing up and it wasn't really good for my mental health. I was already dealing with all of this, you know, changes in my body and then the weight part and that just fed the insecurities with my body and it started getting comments that I was fat and people started telling me like you know I should run so that I could lose weight and sometimes when I eat people would just like randomly say to me like oh you should stop eating because look at you you're getting big and also sometimes if I eat something I get called out like why are you eating that's the thing that makes you fat and that would make me feel so guilty because I get called out when I whenever I eat and then of course I was told to go on a diet which is a normal thing to say here in the Philippines if they think that you need to go on a diet they're just gonna verbally say it to you so I was told so many times by so many people to go on a diet and I remember this one time I look in the mirror you know because of all the comments that I got and I told myself that I'm fat and ugly and I should do something about that and I was crying you know I thought that the only way for me to to look beautiful and to look pretty and to be accepted is to be just like everybody else. That was also the time to where I was comparing myself to other girls. So I thought that I should be like every other girl in my school as well. I should look like them and I should weigh like them, which is absolutely crazy because you know what? 
I'm not really a tall person. I, I could consider myself still as a petite person because I'm only 5'2", but there are other girls in school who are um, shorter and therefore their, their frames are smaller. So I was competing to look like that. They are not the problem. That's how God made them to be and that's great. But the problem is with me, okay? I tried so hard to become just like them. So I finally got fed up of all the comments and all of the pressures of the society. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go in this whole weight loss journey. And here is exactly what I did. Now, I don't encourage you to do this at all because what I did was absolutely ridiculous. So early in the morning, I would wake up really early. I would eat a little bit of breakfast. I would go to school, but instead of taking the tricycle, I would actually walk because my goal is to literally burn every calories that I ate during breakfast. And um, during our snack break in school, I would remember that I would actually eat creams. I remember from the Philippines, do you remember this biscuit called creams? And I would look at the back and I would count the back and it says, I think it's 290 calories for those three um, cookies. I would eat that for snacks and then what I would do is I would walk back home after school at noon because I wanted to burn that 290 something calories that I ate. Because before my goal was to burn every single calorie that I'm eating. And then here's the thing, okay? It's really funny. When I get to my house, what I would actually do before I eat lunch, I would go ahead and run over our compound. I would literally run like probably seven times or like 10 times around our compound and um, it was actually a big place. So I would get inside the house, get outside the house, you know, circle around our backyard, in the front yard. And also, let me tell you, let me tell you my attire during the whole running thing. I would actually take off my uniform, my top uniform, and then I would wear two t-shirts that are baggy. And also I remember wearing this blue binder and I would put that on my waist just so that, you know, if I run, I would actually sweat more. And then a jacket. I thought that, you know, if I wear that, I'm going to sweat more. Therefore, I'm going to lose more weight. I'm going to burn off more calories. My family actually thought it was very funny, but I was unstoppable. They were questioning me why I was doing that. I just told them that I was trying to lose weight and everything and I probably weirded out my neighbors and my neighbor's cat and I would go ahead and just drink water and then once again eat just a little bit of lunch and then I'm gonna go ahead and walk back to school again. In our afternoon snacks, I would remember that I would feel so hungry um, that I would eat piaya five piayas okay it's not even like the big ones it was like the small ones and i would eat five piayas and i would drink this um mango shake just to make sure that i burn off the piaya that i ate um i would go ahead and walk all the way from school to our house and when i get home rest assured that i am going to work out again now my workout before was just like the workout that we do on our pe and my other workout for cardio was me basically dancing to a song, like a crazy person. I basically danced till I, I literally dropped. It, just because I was so exhausted of the whole dancing. So eventually during that time, I did lose weight. And I remember one of my guy classmates, you know, he's like, he, he started noticing that I was losing weight. And he told me that my arms look so skinny that they look like a skeleton and he's probably weirded out because I was like oh thank you because I actually took it as a compliment that motivated me to push it even more to the limits ever since I got that compliment I actually started to lessen even more what I eat there were days where I would miss breakfast I would lit literally just brush my teeth to show my mom that I have finished eating because that's always an indication that I've you know finished eating because now I'm brushing my teeth and I just went to school and when I'm at school since I didn't have any breakfast I would feel like passing out so what I would do is I would eat I don't know if you guys still remember that butterball candy I would used to eat one of that to just keep me alive and awake at school and during lunchtime I would eat just a little bit but the majority of it because you know I would always bring my food inside my room um, because my, you know, excuse for my mom of not e eating at the table together with them is I'm in a hurry, I'm doing something else, so I bring it to my room. But what I do is I would eat some, but the majority, I would just chew the food and then I would spit it out 
and then I would rip out a piece of paper and I would put all of the foods that I've chewed on and I have this drawer this black drawer that I put all of my food in there because if I bring it outside my mom would see it but if I store that in the drawer she doesn't really go through the drawer so I would store all of it there so during dinner I did the exact same thing and sometimes I would cause myself to vomit the food out if I feel like I was full or if I feel like I ate a lot I'm gonna go ahead and vomit it out so I kept on doing that and then all of a sudden I have developed this um, fear of food that I'm literally scared of calories and also during that time I was obsessed with calories I would count all the calories I have and I have to make sure that if I eat something I would literally burn it through exercise so the exercise for me is like really a must I'm probably obsessed with exercising a lot during that time and um, I would constantly measure my waistline. My goal was to reach the 23 inches waist. My goal as well is not only to have the smallest waist but I want um, the defined jawline and so I was like you know what maybe I should lose more weight so that it could be really seen I want my cheekbones to like really pop and also I want my collarbones to be really out there and my goals for my arms is not to have flesh but literally to be skinny like bony skinny I want that this thing the bones right here to really be emphasized and seen but because for me if my bones weren't really showing that I'm not skinny enough and I really wanted that really small waist that I really wanted to see my rib cage showing because for me if my rib cage isn't showing if my hip bones aren't showing then I'm not skinny enough I have to be in that certain size and I really liked it that my you know kneecaps were showing because that is an indication that I finally have lost the weight and my legs are finally skinny so I had a secret competition going on in my mind which is very very bad I was just like oh my gosh what was I thinking I was competing to be more skinny with some of the girls in our school it got worse when summer came because here's the thing during the summer you know since I'm not at school anymore one of my fears is that I couldn't go ahead and walk anymore so I was like oh no what what will I do how will I burn all the cal calories that I've eaten if I can't walk and also one of the fears that I have is like I was really aiming for a very flat stomach so I had this fear as well that I developed that if I eat something I don't want my stomach to ex expand because I just want my stomach to be really really flat and also one of my fears as well is that my mom or my dad can monitor exactly how I eat now because during those times they actually noticed it already they were asking me like why am I losing weight and everything and they were kind of suspicious in what I was doing but I told them I was fine but during the summer I know that my mom is just up to finding out what I was doing usually we eat together as family so therefore she would definitely see what I am going to be eating since I kind of panicked I started to fear food okay it doesn't matter if it's vegetables or if it's something healthy as long as it is food it's the enemy for me okay it's gonna in my mind I thought that it's gonna make me gain weight this is my tactics during you know when we would eat together as a family I would eat rice but after I don't know like how many seconds I would stand up I would go to the bathroom and I would tell them that I would pee but actually I wouldn't pee at all I would literally spit out the food that's on my mouth wrap that in tissue paper and then I would throw it outside of the window of our bathroom I was very suspicious at this point because like who goes to the bathroom to pee every 15 seconds eventually my mom found out what I was doing she found out that I was throwing the food that I chewed outside our bathroom and she found out the food in my drawer and that has really made her mad. I feel like for me as well, it, um, my eating disorder came with body dysmorphia because no matter what my parents would tell me, my parents would tell me like, you should stop doing what you're doing, you should start eating again because you're getting really skinny. But when I look in the mirror, I still see myself as fat and I feel like what I'm doing was not enough so I still kept on starving and starving myself and at this point as well I tried to avoid going out to eat with my family I can't control the portions 
on restaurants and how they give me the food there because like they give you a whole plate and I was like that whole plate is just too much so every single time you know they would go out and eat I would just refuse and you know make some excuses that I can't go out to eat I would also avoid going to family gatherings if you're a Filipino you know that in a family gathering there's always food there okay and there's that one tita of yours who is going to make sure that everybody is fed she's just like monitoring everybody to make sure that everyone is eating and if she sees that you don't eat or if you don't have any plate she's gonna give you a plate and she is going to forcefully feed you and if you don't eat she is going to go ahead and tell your mother that you're not eating and I don't want my mom to know about that so at this point my mom was trying to reach out to me like we had this sit down moment with my mom and dad they were trying to figure out like what's wrong with me they were trying to counsel me and you know they just want to know what's up with me because why all of a sudden did I do all of this you know weight loss thing that it's very noticeable now and they're actually very worried about it they were actually telling me the truth about my situation but all of their words and all of their advices all of their encouragement just went in one ear and it went out on the other ear because I wasn't willing to accept any of their advices. Every single time they would encourage me to eat, I would refuse and I would cry and you know, my parents can do nothing about it anymore. I was really, really stubborn. I, no matter what my parents told me, I didn't listen at all. And also my dad, he was really trying to figure out what's wrong with me and he said that probably I had anorexia because I have all of the symptoms when he told me about it and when he told me that I need to get help or to see a therapist I literally was offended because I was like what I'm going to see a therapist do they think that I'm crazy? I'm like, that was the first time that I heard about the term eating disorder and anorexia. So I didn't really know much about it. And I thought my dad was just like telling me that. So, you know, I would eat, but it's actually true. And I, since I'm living in the Philippines, I don't really hear a lot of cases here that people suffer from an eating disorder. Maybe now it has brought light because of YouTube and the, the, the whole awareness of eating disorder i thought that was like so weird i was like what is anorexia i'm like because in my mind i feel like i'm just that normal teenage girl who is trying to lose weight just like everybody else because you know everybody else during my time and i feel like in this time everybody seems to be on a diet so i thought that i was absolutely normal i didn't really know that i was actually falling into you know anorexia and um practically i was living it already so that that's a thing as well is that the refusal to seek help especially if you think that there's nothing wrong with you that is just the worst case here's the thing with anorexia okay here's the thing with this eating disorder is that you are your own enemy and you are your own solution as well the key is totally entirely up to you and it re really does require a renewing of your mind that's why you can't really tell an anorexic person to just go ahead and eat you can't give advice to an anorexic person without knowing that person's background or what that person went through you know the advices to me before like when my mom tried to reach out to me and her advices I know she was coming in a place of love and of care but it was me that had the issue it was my fear of gaining weight and my fear of food and I was so scared of getting fat comments again and what I was trying to do is I was basically still in a mode of trying to prove to people that I finally have lost weight but I thank God for my mom because she never gave up on me my mom never stopped praying for me and little by little every single day I feel like you know it was already the Lord was like just reaching out to me but the turning point for me is that when I saw my mom crying on the table and I was like what I'm doing is so not worth it I just realized how I made my mom so sad about every single thing that, I, that I'm doing and also the fact that you know the same people who told me that I was fat are the very same people who's telling me what's wrong with me because I got so thin, you know? And at the back of my mind, I was just like, I'm doing this for you guys, you know? It's because of you people <laughs> that I lost all this weight. And to prove to you all that 
I can be skinny too. And the sad thing is, is that I wanted to hear their approval and their affirmation that I was thin and worth it and good enough and I've never gotten it. And I just ended up feeling so sad. You know, when I finally reached my goal of my hip bones showing, my rib cage showing, when I got to that point, I was like, wow, this is it? I didn't really feel accomplished when I finally got to that goal. And also, I was very unhappy. I didn't feel the joy on what I was doing. I felt like what I was doing was pointless, but in the back of my mind still, there's that thought, there's still that fear of gaining weight and fear of food. And that was the thing that I confronted in my life. I built up this fear in my mind that it became a stronghold in my mind that I felt like it ruled over my life and I, I let it rule over my life. For me, I hated confrontation. I hated to confront that fear because every single time I feel the fear, I would just back off and just not do it. So at that point, I was praying, just asking the Lord to help me, you know, to just give me the strength to do it. Because this time, I was actually really willing to change. And also, um, one of my motivations is my mom. Like, you know, I have brought so much sadness to her that I was like, you know what? I need to make my mom happy again. And I do love my mom. And it's just that my stubbornness was just Mm, blocking that. I actually remember okay, I really tried with all of my might to actually eat and have a proper small meal and I remember going inside the bathroom after feeling full you know I was so scared before of feeling satisfied with food because I if I feel full and if I feel that I would lose control of myself and I would be so undisciplined now that I would probably just binge and eat a lot and then I would get fat. It's that loose of control as well that I was so, it was so hard to let go. And I have this urge in my mind, just like this voice screaming in my head to go ahead and throw it up. And I saw my stomach that it expanded a little bit and I was scared of that too. I was literally crying because I was in a verge of just like throwing it up again. But I was like, no, I, I was like, Lord, please help me on this. I don't want to do this again. I don't want to throw it up. I, I told myself, you know what, it's okay. I just acknowledged that, you know what, this is going to be my belly at the moment. You know what, it's going to receive food. It's going to probably, it's, it's going to expand when I eat. And that's okay. So I just kept on reminding myself that. And actually the more I do it, the more I'm brave to eat. And also when I was trying to eat um, proper meals, like solid foods, I'm very willing, but my stomach was so used to not eating solid foods or like a lot of foods, and that would give me really bad stomach aches. So what I did to kind of just like ease it up on my stomach, I went through this phase in my life to where I actually just ate avocados. We would actually used to make avocado ice cream. So it's just basically avocado and then milk, sugar, and I would munch on that and that has definitely helped my body a lot because avocados are healthy fats. During that time, it actually has replenished my body and also I have started eating bread and um, peanut butter. I had this space in my life to where I just ate bread and peanut butter for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's why right now I just cannot with peanut butter. Personally for me, the key for recovering you know, if you have an eating disorder, is the willingness. As soon as the willingness is there, you are unstoppable. I'm not saying that it's gonna be easy for you. You know how some people say, if there's a will, there's always a way. Yeah, that's it. If you are willing to change, and if you're willing to confront the whatever fears that you have, it's already one step ahead to my breakthrough. Even if you have a great support, you know, even if you go to therapists, even if you get help and everything, but if you don't renew your mind, and if you don't change your ways, still gonna go back to the same pattern you're still gonna get stuck in that same hole that you are in right now and if you're still not confronting that fear of whatever it is that you're fearing of you know for me that was food and I was afraid that my belly is going to grow big and I was also afraid of um, getting fat if I didn't break down that stronghold in my mind I'd still go back to my old ways and I was just reminded by my identity in the Lord you know that regardless of anything else, of how I look like or a way, I am precious in God's sight and I am good enough, you know, and I don't necessarily have to please people and that I don't have to prove myself to people in order 
for me to feel accepted and to feel like I belong. So that's it. I was willing. I renewed my mind and I confronted my fears. If you're going through an eating disorder, I hope that you can relate to this story and I really do pray you know that um, even if you don't believe in God, I still pray for your recovery and um, I'm actually not imposing my religion on you but I'm just letting you know that God loves you. That especially if you're a Christian or if you, have, if you have a family member who is undergoing through an eating disorder, do not stop praying for them. You know, um, I believe that really prayer does work. To every single one of you who watches this video, I hope that my story has helped you and maybe right now you're going through things in your life and maybe you're, you know, having the same fears as I have and I pray that, you know, God is going to give you just the strength to overcome it as well, you know, because for me, apart, <laughs> apart from the Lord, I don't think I would have been able to do that. So. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!